Good evening, strike action. GMOA puts forward doctors' allowance and CITEM as basis for their trade union action tomorrow. We have decided to go for the trade union action tomorrow. It will be a 24-hour token strike. Post-bond report meetings. Speaker Karu Jayasuriya to convene party leaders tomorrow to discuss further action. A stern warning. Former President Mahindra Rajapaksa says annulling his civic rights will have consequences. And in sports closing the gap, six-time Australian Open champion Federer says that his goals and priorities will determine how far he will go in the game. I think that's what's going to dictate how successful. Also making headlines, music's biggest night. Bruno Mars clinches top awards at the star-studded 60th Grammys in New York. Once again, a very good evening and welcome to First at Nine on Adhavirana 24-7. I'm Mahesh Chani and I'll be taking you through the biggest stories from Sri Lanka and from around the world in the next 30 minutes. Also, the very latest from the Grammys coming up later on in the show. But first, let me take you straight to the Parliament. That's where we begin our broadcast tonight. A party leaders' meeting was convened today under the patronage of President Maithripala Sirisena to discuss the parliamentary debate on the report by the Commission of Inquiry that probed central bank bond issuance. The Attorney General, Central Bank Governor and Director General of the Bribery and Corruption Commission also participated at this meeting. Meanwhile, Speaker Karuja Surya also called for a special party leaders' meeting tomorrow for which the Chairman of the Election Commission, Mahinda Deshapriya, is invited. The party leaders' meeting convened by President Maitripala Sirisena to discuss further action on the report by the Presidential Commission of Inquiry to investigate central bank bond issuances was held at the Presidential Secretariat today. The meeting focused on expediting legal measures against those found responsible through the inquiry and to recover losses incurred to the state. Allegations of some pages of the report being missing also came under discussion to which relevant officials explained the necessity to maintain the confidentiality of certain information for legal procedure against those responsible in the misappropriation of bond issuances. Meanwhile, it had also been decided to convene a weekly progress review meeting headed by the Secretary to the President. Members representing the Joint Opposition and JVP did not participate in the meeting today. It was discussed to present stronger laws in Parliament within the next few weeks on financial fraud. Well, several media briefings were convened regarding the party leaders' meeting and some parties boycotting the session. We are letting the President know with respect, be it the Rajapaksha regime or otherwise, our complete support is with you if you are taking action against fraudsters belonging to any party. But since we believe that the president is attempting to gain political advantage by holding a debate just before the election, we didn't participate in the party leaders' meeting today. Election campaigns are to be concluded by midnight on February 7th. The chairman of election commission may face issues if a debate is held on the 8th. It would be better if the debate is held before the 7th, but we really don't have any problem with it. I would also like to speak a little about something that was mentioned by a politician, that there should be over 3,000 pages in the bond report, but only some 1,000 pages were presented. This is only a summary of the evidence. Such confusions happen when economists attempt to do a lawyer's job. <laughs> Parliament requested the Secretary to the President to be present in Parliament. This request must be made by the Speaker. But then the President calls for a party leaders' meeting so that party leaders and the Secretary to the President could meet here. That is wrong. The government is trying to put the entire blame of the bond scam on Ravi Karunanayaka. As per information we have received, the commission to investigate bribery or corruption is to take legal measures against him and he is to be removed from the UNP membership. Through such measure, they are trying to pretend that those responsible to the bond issue have been brought before justice. Well, 
Well, latest on the election now, Minister of Law and Order Sagala Ratnayake calls the police to act independently throughout the period of the local authorities election. Meanwhile, the Center for Monitoring Election Violence pointed out that violence and threats against women candidates are on the increase. Co-convener of CMEV, Dr. Pakis of the Sarwanamuttu, however, said that acts of election law violations are low compared to previous elections. Three individuals, including the former media secretary of Minister Lakshman Kiriala, were arrested today in connection with an incident of assault on SLPB candidate in Kandy and for vandalizing his house. Following a court order, the three individuals were remanded until the 12th of February. Meanwhile, a group of individuals have assaulted a candidate representing the Sri Lanka Purujana Pirumuna from the Balanguda Pradeshya Sabha last night. Yeah. The victims claimed that the attack was carried out by a candidate representing the UMP from the same Pradeshya Sabha. Speaking at a meeting in Matra, Minister of Law and Order Sagla Ratnayaka urged the police to exercise their powers independently. The police can't complain that they are unable to take legal action. We've given them the necessary powers, esteem and even increased their salaries. So if they can't do what's necessary, that would be their weakness. Letting an assault happen is wrong. I request the police to act independently. The Human Rights Commission of Sri Lanka established an election complaint desk to receive complaints related to the upcoming local authorities' election. Complaints can be lodged on its 24 hotlines 077 30 88 135 or 077 37 62 112 or by emailing iihrc sri lanka at gmail.com. The Center for Monitoring Election Violence held its first media briefing ahead of the upcoming local government election. There certainly have been incidents but not of the nature and of the extent that there have been in previous elections. However, in the present campaign, because of the 25% allocation, what we have observed is that there are particular acts of intimidation, of threat, of abuse and insult, as well as campaigns against particular candidates with regard to female representation. This is unfortunate. We appeal to all political parties in terms of leaders and secretaries at the national and at the local level to ensure that do not lend their support or associate with those who are engaging in this kind of activity, verbal abuse, a lot of it on social media, targeting particular individual female candidates, and to please to ensure that they will take stern, serious action against any party members or supporters, individuals or organizations that engage in this type of activity. President Maitripala Sirisena says that he has finalized the course of action to be taken against those who are responsible for the bond issue. He made this remark at a public rally held in Marthali today. SLFP organized another campaign rally ahead of the local government election in Marthale today. Many senior politicians representing the SLFP participated in the rally. Chairman of the party, President Maitri Pala Sirisena, was warmly welcomed by supporters upon his arrival. I convened a meeting with party leaders this morning to discuss actions that will be taken pertaining to the report by the Commission on Central Bank Bond Issuances. You are all aware that through this scam, EPF money belonging to innocent estate workers, employees at private institutions and Mahapula scholarship funds were robbed. I have finalized the course of action in order to hasten the process of punishing those accountable and in order to acquire the stolen funds from these private firms. The money will be returned to the government and to the people. I will punish all the thieves. I convened a meeting with all media institutions recently and I said that within the past 10 years, loans obtained from abroad amount to over 10 trillion rupees and out of this, 1 trillion is recorded in the books while the rest is unaccounted for. Speaking at a rally yesterday, Mahindra Rajapaksha said that I had mentioned the amount was in US dollars. I am not a fool to do so. What I told the media was not to make a mistake with this amount and that a trillion is one and twelve zeros. I wish to say that I do not miscalculate like Mahindra Rajapaksha did back on the 8th of January 2015. <laughs> Prime Minister Rani Wickremesinghe states that the United National Party is the only party with a plan to develop the village. Speaking at a rally in Kandy, the Premier said that those who criticise the government not only lacks development vision, but also funds to support a plan. 
The United National Party organized the rally in Akurana Kendi yesterday ahead of the local government election. The rally was presided over by party leader Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe. When there is an election to select a government for the village, there should be plans revealed by parties to the people. No one else has plans. It is only we who have plans. A majority of my speeches focus on our plans. Yes, I do criticize the former president Mahindra Rajapaksha for the destruction he is responsible for. But I don't continue my entire speech on blaming him. 75 to 80 percent of my speeches contain what we have achieved so far and what we plan on doing in the future. We've got both plans and the money. Our government will remain until 2020. What will the others do? They will keep on criticizing us. Now they are screaming about bond issuances. I must say that the people who criticize do not have plans. Those who find fault do not have funds to develop the village. Criticism is not a problem because I am used to being scolded. More on the election, former President Mahindra Rajapaksa warns that the consequences of annulling his civic rights will not be favourable for the government. He made this comment speaking at a rally in Lunugambehera yesterday. Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna organised a rally in Lunugambehera yesterday in line with the upcoming local authorities' election. The rally was presided over by the former President Mahindra Rajapaksa. What does my friend, the president, say? He says that this government and his cabinet of ministers have stolen millions of rupees within the past three years. They accused us of being thieves. They filed cases against me saying that I haven't paid money to the TV channel ITN. I hadn't asked them to telecast my advertisements. Ronald Vikramasinghe, on the other hand, says that they will nullify my civic rights. What happened when Sirimawa was deprived of her civic rights? I asked them to try doing that. They could do that if there is no law in this country. We believe that our judges cannot be swayed. JVP parliamentarian Vijita Herat says the president has invited individuals who are identified as thieves to form an SLFP-led government. Speaking at a public rally, he also ridiculed the Prime Minister's statement that a committee is looking into whether UNP members were responsible for any wrongful acts committed in connection to the bond issuance. A public rally to garner support for the Janata Vimukta Perumuna ahead of the upcoming local government election was held in Gampaha yesterday. Although they say this is a small election, it is not. These past three years, the president put on a timid look, as if he was unable to do anything. But now we see him being very harsh. He says he will appoint a commission, punish thieves and slash them with a sword. On the other side, Ron is said he too will appoint a commission and find out if anyone from the United National Party is involved. What did the president say? The president challenged the parliament to convene and discuss contents of the Bond Commission report before the 10th of next month. Even a child knows that the president has the power to convene parliament if he wishes to do so. Ranil Vikramasinghe is not objecting this either. President, why don't you use your power and convene parliament? We will tell the truth about this report to the people. President Matripal Sirisena says that he will punish the corrupt and those who committed fraud during the Rajapaksha regime. He said he will appoint a commission to do this. The problem here is that while he is making such statements, he is inviting those in Mahindra Rajapaksa's side to join the SLFP so he can establish a SLFP-led government. Who is he trying to make a new government with? Well, it is with the thieves. <laughs> Moving on, and in one of our headline stories, the Government Medical Officers Association announces that all medical practitioners will launch a countrywide token strike starting at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Addressing a media briefing in Colombo today, Assistant Secretary of GMOA Dr. Haritha Aludge said the move is in response to government's failure to abolish CITEM. The GMOA states that the token strike is aimed at several demands, including the revision of the extra duty allowances of doctors and also the abolition of CITEM. We will be initiating a trade union action token strike tomorrow from 8 a.m. onwards. And uh, we have demanded uh, 10 major demands, including the revision of the extra duty allowance and also the abolition of the CITEM and other issues which are specific to the doctors and also to the health sector and the government employees in the general. Therefore, we have urged the authorities to give solutions to these issues for the last one year. And because of the lack of response from the government and from the health authorities, we have decided to go for the trade union action. It will be a 24-hour token strike. Thereafter, we have decided to call the phone our emergency general committee meeting on 5th of February. And at the general committee, we will decide the further action. 
Now here's a look at other stories making news across Sri Lanka. Colombo High Court today rejected the request made by former Secretary to the President Lalit Viratunga to travel overseas. He was previously questioned in December at the Police Special Investigations Unit regarding a complaint alleging financial irregularities in the purchase of vehicles for the Presidential Secretariat during his tenure. A group of naval personnel attached to the North Central Naval Command napped two Sri Lankan nationals who were attempting to smuggle 12 kilograms of gold to India via sea at Urumalay area yesterday. The consignment of gold is worth approximately 70 million rupees and was in the form of 120 biscuits, each weighing 100 grams. A dinghy used for the transportation of the consignment was also seized. A general amnesty period starting today has been announced for Sri Lankans living in Kuwait without residency permits. The Sri Lanka Embassy in Kuwait requests relatives of Sri Lankans living in Kuwait to inform them to rectify residency status or return to Sri Lanka under the amnesty granted. The amnesty period ends on February 22nd. You are watching Sri Lanka's number one news channel, Other Therana 24-7. Let's move on to business news now. Minister of Sports Dayasiri Jayasekhar says that Sri Lanka should not miss the opportunity to promote the country as a destination for sports tourism. He made this remark at a media briefing held in Colombo recently. Sri Lanka is set to host South Asia's first Ironman 70.3 next month, where professional athletes across the world will take part in a triathlon at selected destinations in the country. The Sri Lanka Tourism Development Board said Ironman 70.3 Colombo is expected to bring in 3 million US dollars to the tourism sector. Speaking at a media briefing recently, Minister of Tourism Development and Christian Religious Affairs John Amaratunga says over 2,000 registrations from over 63 countries have been received to participate at the event. The event per se is something that is going to bring in a large number of foreigners to this country. A total of 2,344 have uh, registered themselves who will be traveling to Sri Lanka in order some to participate, some to be spectators, some to be facilitators. From Europe there are 736, Americans 148, Middle East 162, Africa 141, Asia Pacific 1,157. Speaking at the event, Sports Minister Dasri Jasekara said that Sri Lanka has the potential to cater to foreigners looking for adventure and sports. The world is changing and more people are traveling for the sport and adventure. These are mostly affluent and educated individuals and we as a country are ensuring that we do not miss the opportunity in entering the world of sport and tourism. And Ironman is a perfect platform to launch our ability as a country. Sri Lanka as a country stands firm to provide enjoyment and excitement to the world and this Ironman 70.3 Colombo will provide a way to position Sri Lanka as the finest destination in the world. Australia has said that it plans to become one of the world's top 10 defense industry exporters within a decade. The nation currently sells about 1.6 billion US dollars in defense equipment each year, making it the 20th largest arms exporter. Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull said that manufacturers would now be offered government-backed loans to stimulate the industry. However, aid groups say that the move would not help global efforts to build peace, an assertion rejected by the Australian government. Let's take you to the stock market now. The bench all share price index lost 2.09 points to close at 6,453.95, while the S&P SL 20 index shed 12.31 points to close trading at 3,737.58. Meanwhile, the daily market turnover stood at 337.06 million rupees. Let's cross over to Imeshi Fernando from the Colombo Stock Exchange for a detailed report. The market capitalization at the end of the day was 2,951.24 billion rupees. Today's foreign purchases were 24.9 million rupees and foreign sales were 24.5 million rupees. There were three crossings today and the crossing turnover was 83.92 million rupees. A bit of uh, news from the Asian stock markets. Asian shares extended their bull run today amid upbeat corporate earnings and strong global economic growth, while the dollar struggled to bounce as the White House continued to complain of unfair trade practices by competitors. MC MSCIS, broadest index of Asia-Pacific shares, ousted Japan 
uh, outside Japan rather added 0.26% aiming for a 12th straight session of gains. It is up by 8% for the year so far. Now Hong Kong's Hang Seng has been the best performer for the year so far with a rise of almost 11% while Shanghai blue chips ran into profit taking today. Now, here's a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee traded against other currencies during the day today. In international news, militants have attacked an army base near a military academy in the Afghan capital Kabul, killing at least 11 soldiers. It comes two days after the deadliest bombing in months hit Kabul when Taliban militants detonated an ambulance packed with explosives, killing over 100 people. The attack on the base today, however, was claimed by Islamic State. Several explosions were heard as well as small arms fire as the attack began at about 5 a.m. local time at the military base in western Kabul. Defence Ministry spokesman General Daulad Waziri said that two attackers blew themselves up, two others were killed by security forces and a fifth was arrested. Four AK-47 assault rifles, one suicide vest and one rocket launcher were seized. The attack has been claimed by the Islamic State according to the militants groups Amak News Agency. The attack in the western outskirts of the capital Kabul came two days after an ambulance bomb in the center of the city killed more than 100 people and just over a week after another attack on the Hotel Intercontinental killed more than 20. Both of those attacks were claimed by the Taliban. Both the Taliban and IS seem now to be focusing their energies on carrying out attacks in Kabul. Government officials say it is a response to progress made by the security forces elsewhere in the country. You are watching Sri Lanka's award-winning news channel. Verena 24-7. We start off with some rugby news. Candy Sports Club extended their unbeaten run as they managed to beat Navy Sports Club by 24 points at Valisari yesterday. Meanwhile, CHNFC overpowered Sri Lanka Army by two points at their encounter in Havelock Park yesterday. Candy dominated the entire match as they never missed opportunities to score. At full time, Candy scored 41 points while Navy could only score 17 points. Candy Sports stand at the top of the points table due to their unbeaten run at the league. Meanwhile, Sri Lanka Army dominated the first half, collecting 17 points with three tries and a conversion. CHNFC scored 15 with two tries, a conversion and a penalty. Despite Sri Lanka Army leading the first half, a stunning comeback by CHNFC in the last 10 minutes paved the way to victory. CHNFC scored a total of 30 with four tries, two conversions and two penalties. Sri Lanka Army's total of 28 included four tries, one conversion and two penalties. The six-time Australian Open champion Roger Federer states that age is no barrier and it's just a number as long as you maintain a good schedule and stay hungry. The Swiss maestro made this remark responding to journalists at a post-match interview. Several generations of young tennis players have come and gone. Yet, Roger Federer's ability to stand the tests of time has made him the greatest to play the sport. Oh, I know. I was just really happy, you know, to be honest, to having that it was all done because I was so nervous, you know, all day, and this it was eating me up inside. And you're going against guys who are bigger, stronger, and younger. How long do you think you can continue playing at this level? No idea. I've won three slams now in 12 months. I can't believe it myself. Um, I just got to keep a have a keep a good schedule, uh, stay hungry. Um, and then maybe good things can happen, you know. Then I don't think age is a, a, an issue per se, you know. It's just, a, it's just a number. I need to be very careful in my planning and uh, really decide before and what are my goals, what are my priorities. And I think that's what's going to dictate how successful I will be.
Well, Bruno Mars pulled off a clean sweep of album, record and song of the year categories at the 2018 Grammy Awards last night, upsetting odds favourite Kendrick Lamar and Jay-Z to take home evening's three most prestigious awards. The 24K Magic Singer won all six awards he was nominated for, while Lamar went home with five and Jay-Z, who had the most nominations of any performer with eight, was left empty-handed. Now here's a look at what happened at the Madison Square Garden last night. The 60th Grammy Awards. Kendrick Lamar opened the star-studded night at the Madison Square Garden in New York, bringing the awards to the city after a lapse of 15 years. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this, the 60th annual Grammy Awards. My name is James Corden. Comedian James Corden was the host of the 60th Grammy Awards, where he got political instantly by auditioning various celebrities to narrate the audio version of Michael Wolff's bombshell book against Donald Trump, titled Fire and Fury, inside the Trump White House. Trump did not enjoy his own inauguration. Stand by, take one. He had a long-time fear of being poisoned. One reason why he liked to eat at McDonald's. Nobody knew he was coming, and the food was safely pre-made. That's it, we've got it. That's the one. You think so? Oh, yeah. The Grammy's in the bag? In the bag. Musical performances by legends such as Lady Gaga, Pink, and U2 colored the night with absolute breathtaking showmanship. When the awards were rolled out, it was Ed Sherry who won the award for the best pop solo performance for his song Shape of You. Ed Sheeran could not be here tonight. Newcomer Alicia Cara was awarded the Best New Artist Award. Alicia Cara. Yeah. I just wanted to encourage everyone to, to support real music and real artists because everyone deserves the same shot. Um, yeah. Kendrick guys, Lamar managed to clinch the best rap album award no along with best tonight, rap performances and best to... rap sung performances awards. Damn, Kendrick Lamar. jump I thought it was about the accolades and the cars and the clothes but it's really about expressing yourself and putting that paint on the canvas for the world to evolve for the next listener the next generation after that you know what I'm saying Bruno Mars was the showstopper of the evening by clinching all uh, three major awards true. of the night that's what I like <laughs> Twenty-four carrot magic. Bruno Mars. Producers: Shampoo, Press, and Curl. Engineers: Tom Coyne, Serban Ganea, John Haynes, and Charles Maniz. Twenty-four carrot magic. Bruno Mars. Producer: Shampoo, Press, and Curl. Engineers: Tom Coyne, Serban Ganea, John Haynes, and Charles Maniz. This album wouldn't exist if it wasn't for these guys that have written these songs and. You know, I had to sprinkle a little Mars sauce on it, and, and uh, this is for them. I love you guys. Thank you so much. I don't know. This is incredible. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Grannies. You are watching Sri Lanka's award-winning news channel, Other Verena 24-7. Well, Katharina Chang is at the Other Than Weather Center with your forecast first evening edition.
A very good evening and welcome to Forecast First. Now, temperatures are to vary between 20 and 27 degrees Celsius over the course of the day. Now, if you take a look at the map, you can see that there will be a low pressure zone towards the morning time in the central region of the island and will gradually spread towards the western, southern and the eastern coastal belt throughout the day. Now, this could bring about some thunder showers in the areas of Trincomalee as well as Patiklo and Vaunia. And moving downwards, some thunder showers can be expected in the cities of Kandy, Colombo and Gaul. That is it from your weather centre tonight. It's now time to take a quick look at your city by city forecast. And that is a part of your world tonight right here on Other Therana 24-7. Now, Mahish Johnny, first at nine, will return tomorrow at the same time. Be sure to join us then. And before we wrap things up for tonight, let's take you back to New York and to the Grammys where nominees, presenters and performers hit the red carpet ahead of the award ceremony. Now, here's a look at the fashion. Good night. Bringing you the news and information 24 hours a day. This is Sri Lanka's premier news channel. Other Verena, 24-7.